This is exactly the type of story I love to tell. Part of it is that in his case, this is his second life. Dan, I've been following your work for years. Tell me about this. How did you get started in blowing glass? Okay, well, this is a really unusual route to becoming a glass artist. Back in the 80s, I had a limousine service. During one of my limousine runs, somebody had given me a book of a gold leaf against what they owe me for a limousine run. I started playing with the gold leaf. And what if we took the gold scraps from the cleaning dish and put it in a little glass dome and made like a little gold leaf snow dome out of it? You mean like something like this? It is something very much like that. Okay. By 1993, we were selling in 5,000 stores, producing 50,000 pieces a year. We had turned into a small factory with three furnace stations, five people I had trained into blowing glass, and if somebody had told me I would be a glass artist, I would have laughed at them. And now you are. And now I am. He started out doing something else and then he went to something else that was entirely different. That's kind of what I'm doing, a lot of people are doing at this stage in their life. They're doing something else. They're following their passion. So you have art pieces as an art glass guy now. Yes. Hanging in the Walker Art Museum. Yes, having never done chandeliers before, having never done overhead, so we went from tabletop to over the top overnight. I think any time I hear other people's stories. My life is enhanced. When I can share those stories with others, I think their lives are enhanced as well. Well, welcome to What's Next Live. Reinvention for the past uh, well, for a lot of people past the age of 50, it's not practical or desired for reinvention. However, a lot of folks still have, they're looking for an encore for their life, another reboot maybe to their career. They've got the energy and the passion and certainly the life skills and experience for renewal. Dan Mather joins me tonight. He's a glass artist at Golden Flow Studios. And uh, thank you for giving us a little bit of an update on what you're doing now. We had that video of what you were doing. Wonderful, yes, and, thanks uh, for having me back. Yeah, <laughs> this is ex very exciting. So now you've gone upward and onward. We have. So when we last were talking, it was focused on the Golden Flow, which we had been doing for you know, many years, which was a complete change of career course in itself. And uh, from there, we always had done some pennant lights. Most glass artists will blow pennant lights here and there. And with the flood of Chinese pennant lights coming, every Lowe's and Home Depot has them now, we completely stopped. And it occurred to me that there's still a, a demand for lighting. And I thought, well, I'm going to actually break into scientific glass mm. and take advantage of my colors. And we have so many epoxies we use with the golden flow. I thought, I'm just going to see what happens. Mm -hmm. And so we started making some lights and it started becoming popular. So we're doing more lights. And at about the same time here, we had, the big break was of course when the Walker Art Center approached mm -hmm. us. Mm -hmm. And we had just been doing some of the pennant lights and smaller lights and they needed of course these monstrous grand chandeliers. And when I wanted to know, well, you know, why me as the tabletop and the little lights? Mm -hmm. uh, because we had a reputation for doing such high production work mm -hmm. for handmade work. And mm -hmm. so as they said to me, we want somebody who wouldn't glaze over the thought of doing two or 3,000 pieces mm -hmm. to make these chandeliers. Mm -hmm. So after the walker, we kind of made the leap into doing large chandelier work. We had done, uh, you know, a hedge fund in Boston. We did a hospital up north in Purim, Minnesota. Um, we had done some of this, but it didn't quite break through into the residential lighting side of it until suddenly two years ago. Mm -hmm. And we have um, a picture of you uh, at a residential uh, installation uh, out in San Francisco, and it's fantastic because it's like a two-story <laughs> glass entryway from outside, but then your piece is then inside. It's just stunning. Thank you, thank you. That was based on the Walker Art Center chandeliers. In fact, that was why they commissioned me, mm. was they were familiar with the Walker Art Center and wanted something residential scale, mm -hmm. uh, which they put into their home there. And that's still about 30 inches by 12 feet of hang. So it's mm -hmm. a good size for a home. But there's so many modern homes, so many two-story homes, so many vaulted ceiling homes mm -hmm. that a normal fixture looks lost in the airspace. Mm -hmm. You also and have we, some uh, commercial then yeah. product at Washburn Lofts. And that looks a lot different from the other one. Yes, that was actually the first vertical 
chandelier, I guess I'll say, that I made. Mm -hmm. uh, they had this large space between two massive concrete pillars, and they wanted something that was going to follow this huge table that was underneath it. So we did the same glass chunk concept right. and uh, brought in some amber pieces. We have some giant glass amber pieces in there. Beautiful. And uh, mm -hmm. that became the first horizontal mm -hmm. orientation instead of the long flowing vertical one. And for then people who are familiar now with going visiting Calhoun Square, that is such a fun mm. looking piece because that's, is it constantly changing colors? Yes, that was in, a, in its basic program, we call it the Aurora Borealis. And we have it set to keep washing through the yellows and greens and blues and oranges and reds and it goes into a constant cycle. Mm -hmm. And because of the, uh, the RGB LED lighting that's so available now that we've incorporated into so much of our work, mm -hmm. if there's an event for Vikings, they can make it all purple. Mm. During Pride Week, we put up a pride flag. Oh, okay. Um, mm -hmm. We actually have a controller that uh, if they so wanted, they could set up so it could scroll across um, marry me Susan. Oh my uh, gosh. Uh, <laughs> we can have it do anything. We have a controller and uh, the ability to reproduce 16 million colors across wow. the color wheel. Yeah, that so, is so um, cool. So what's next for you? I mean, you've got all these things that are going. Are you wanting to be in more commercial sites and more homes or both? Well, we always look forward to doing commercial sites because they have such great airspace to fill. And uh, we could use some of the creativity and some of the colors um, and I get sometimes a license to put together my own plans, but we've really made a move into residential. Mm -hmm. And I think part of it is because so much lighting is just stock lighting. Mm -hmm. And so many people have you know, beautiful custom homes, they'll do custom furniture, they get their artwork on the walls, and then they get lighting that comes off the shelf and it doesn't quite match at all. So when they come to me, it's specifically, here's the airspace we have. And here's the color palette we're working with and they suddenly find out, oh, and they can actually come to the shop, come down to the shop, North of King Building, yeah. and uh, work with me on picking out colors we weave into it, the actual type of cord they use, or maybe we're going to use metal tubing over the wire, and you know, this is the size spread, and this is the different shades and tones of glass. I can get my glass chunks in you know, a dozen different colors. I can wow. get four different clear varieties, and each one suits a little different purpose, and the people find out that they're a part of the process now. They're not just ordering something and giving me a stock number. They're really saying, okay, I like the blue of this glass and a little bit of the green of this glass, and I want a little bit of a, a sand added to the clear of the oh. pendant lights. And, oh, yeah. And we just uh, mm -hmm. develop it so it really fits. It's one of a kind for their home. Mm -hmm. Uh, and that seems to have been a, a market niche that doesn't exist much. There's not a lot of mm. custom light right. creators out there. Yeah. So tell people at home where they can visit you and watch you in your studios. Oh, we, wonderful. Well, our studio is in the North of King Building. Uh, it's 1500 Jackson Street over in Northeast. We're kind of the central uh, building of the Arts District in Northeast now. Um, I'm in the shop 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. Monday through Friday. The shop's open every Saturday noon till 5 uh, the building itself opens up for first Thursdays, every first Thursday of the month from 5 to 9 o'clock. There's probably 40 art studios that will open up. Uh, of course, Art of World is the big one in the spring. Right. We have Art Attack in the fall. Mm -hmm. um, I can be caught online. We have GoldenFlowStudios.com, which is the Golden Flow line primarily. Mm -hmm. We have GoldenFlowChandeliers.com, mm -hmm. and there I have it broken down into you know, the commercial projects, residential projects. Wow. Got um, a lot going on. It's uh, it's been an, a fun addition to just doing the tabletop glass that <laughs> okay. uh, dominated for so many years. Yeah. So let people know again. It's the GoldenFlowStudios.com, right? We have that underneath our, yep. on our screen here, and all kinds of things going on. Yep. Thank you so much for joining us and giving us Great. an update on what you're doing. It's been fun to follow, and it'll be fun to have you back maybe in a year to find out what's the next thing. That you're there doing. we go. But thank you very much. All right. Thank you, and thank you for joining us at home. Until next time.